Good afternoon. It's Friday, August 27, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Ernerberry Market Report, sponsored by NAM's sixth edition Meat Buyer's Guide. Today, foodmarket.com's reporting, according to a report released by the Associated Press, today Japan has declared an end to a foot and mouth disease epidemic. The outbreak began in April in southern Japan, which produces the world famous Wagyu cattle, known for intricate marbling and tenderness. You can get more on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. Now, let's set the tone. In the egg market, retail demand remains mixed, with some received reports indicating that there is selected pushback by consumers in reaction to the recent product recall. Acquisition interest continues to dominate selling interest. The market is relatively quiet and firm. Looking at chicken, we continue to find mostly steady market conditions overall throughout product lines, though they are beginning to show a little more availability. There still set, tends to be plenty of seller confidence in terms of asked prices. That being said, buyers can be described as somewhat less eager to commit. Whole birds and wogs are adequate for spot needs and can be rated steady. Boneless and tenders are being offered with more regularity. Drumsticks generally move at discount while leg quarters and thighs are in a more stable position. Talking Turkey, the complex is in a very good shape and we continue to record bookings of several lines that indicate additional market strength is on hand. Thigh meat is one of the items being pursued without, this, without the success of buyers expected to realize. Higher prices are paid and our quotations are likely higher. Much the same scenario is being acted out for fresh drums and any form of whole wings. Both of these lines are very tight and actively pursued. Frozen Tom breast meat is full steady to firm. Willingness to pay premiums is noted with export buyers seemingly especially needy. Breast trim, wing meat, and scapula are super strong. Whole body turkeys are entering the weekend fully supported and in tight supply. Like with breast meat, the most willingness to pay sharp premiums for limited offerings is expressed from export generated demand. Now with a seafood market update, here's John Sackton from SeafoodNews.com. Our top story today is that the FDA is nearing approval of AquaBounty's genetically engineered farm salmon. This is, is an Atlantic salmon with an ocean pout gene sequence that grows twice as fast as a conventional Atlantic salmon. Uh, the salmon grows year round instead of seasonally as uh, traditional Atlantic salmon do. Uh, as a result, it can reach market size in half the time that a normal salmon takes. Uh, the potential approval here has major ramifications for the salmon market. Uh, we think we're not opposed to the idea of genetically modified farmed salmon. Uh, by drastically cutting the cost, uh, this could become a huge further expansion of the availability of, of salmon uh, as a key uh, food source. Uh, however, uh, in order to prevent the negative impacts on the industry, it's very important that the, farm, that the genetically engineered salmon be labeled as such. There is a move already underway among farm salmon to differentiate different types of farm salmon, uh, such as Cook Aquaculture's Echo Label, such as the uh, GAA uh, developing salmon farming standards, as, as is the WWF. Uh, and once these things become widespread, uh, consumers will have a choice as to what type of farm salmon they're going to purchase. It's very important that genetically engineered farm salmon fit into this matrix because the one thing that could seriously damage the industry is the idea that consumers would fear that somehow they were buying a genetically engineered animal and they did not know that that was the case. Um, the FDA is going to be holding hearings in September on the labeling issue as well as the scientific issue and we hope the industry will support uh, a strong labeling regimen for uh, this new product. In Lexington, Mass., this is John Sackton. Thanks, John. Moving over to red meats, today's steady boxed beef offering prices are seen in the initial canvas of the market, except for some thin meats where prices are at reduced levels for quick ship. Sellers are indicating interest for immediate ship is limited. Many buyers appear content with orders near term and are waiting to see if any opportunity arises that fits their needs. In the boneless market, undertones for the leaner boneless beef are about steady. Significant trade has yet to develop that would sway our quotations either way. Fresh 50s are rated steady to slightly weaker. Overall movement has been light to this point. 
This morning has been a typically slow Friday for the imported beef complex. Undertones are about steady. Our listings are unchanged thus far. Looking at pork today, cash hog prices are expected to work lower in response to falling wholesale pork prices. Terminal hogs are rated steady to lower. Trade is expected to be light today with hams and bellies remaining generally steady. Trimmings are said to be in shorter supply comparatively and further premiums could yet develop. Sellers of fresh pork continue to actively seek bids for a building supply. Loins, butts and sparrows all carry barely steady to weaker undertones. As a Reminder, don't forget to check out Erner Berry's Insider's Red Re Meat Report in its entirety this afternoon on Comtel. We'll wrap things up this afternoon with a look at economic indicators with Maria Morales. The Bureau of Economic Analysis released this morning its second GDP estimate for the second quarter of the year. The figure was revised down to a 1.6 increase from an initial estimate of 2.4 and was modestly better than expected according to many analysts and economists. Thanks, Maria. That's your Ernerberry Mid-Morning Tone, brought to you on Comtel by NAMM's all-new 6th edition Meat Buyer's Guide.